Welcome to the Deep Cut. This is our opportunity on the Knife Junkie uh, channel to go deep with one of our guests, one of our uh, uh, favorite people out there in the knife world uh, on whatever it is that they do. Uh, for instance, uh, the first Deep Cut was with Jimmy Slash. We talked about extra large cold steel knives. That's how I got to know him. Well, tonight's guest, today's guest is Tom Engelson. Uh, you might know him as Blades and Such on Instagram. And, uh, uh, well, Tom, welcome to the show. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, Bob. Thanks for having me. Well, it's a pleasure. Uh, let, let me just uh, give you a, a little bit more of an introduction. Uh, Tom, uh, I, I sought him out because he makes these beautiful um, micarta and other scales for Emerson knives, which you all know I'm a huge fan of, but also ZTs and others. Um, yes. But I have, yeah. But I have all these Emersons, and I had to have uh, you make a couple for me. Um, and so let's just start with what you made for me first. Uh, it was the CQC thirteen. Thirteen, handle. yes, sir. Yes, sir. We did uh, we did natural canvas micarta uh, with a checkering on that for some substance for some grip. Um, definitely a, a kind of a tough look, but definitely not over. Uh, over aggressive um it's got the feel of the emerson um g10 the the medium coarse peel ply that they use uh mm -hmm. but it, it doesn't seem to tear the pockets as much uh and then of course we did the matching backspacer there for you on that one yeah uh so you you mentioned the 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 texture uh when i first when i ordered ordered this from you you were first starting to do this uh crossed hatch sort of flat knurling uh pattern here and uh i was just in love with it because the first ones that i saw you did this sort of bolster look here uh mm -hmm. where, yeah. where you take it all the way up to right around the pivot area and you leave it yeah. open and free um this texture you say it's like the medium uh peel ply emerson g10 texture and it is in that it's very grippy but also it's way less harsh on the pants. Yes. Yes, sir. And that, yeah, actually, Bob, that's called uh, checkering. We use a checkering file and it's actually a little bit labor intensive. Uh, so I don't offer it, you know, that often. Uh, but when someone reaches out and says, I've got a real special knife, uh, I'll take time. And, and just checkering a handle like that, two, two slabs takes about two and a half hours. And that's not even cutting it out doing the holes and uh, sizing it. So it's pretty labor intensive. That's just the checkering. So that's a, um, that's a file that has maybe five or six rows of, of teeth, teeth that are deep enough to do. Let's see that. Yeah. So oh, you can see you got about eight rows in there, maybe 10 rows. Uh, this one's only a half inch wide. Um, they make them bigger. Uh, but my buddy Christian, he, uh, he had done some stuff on one of the Facebook groups and I said, Hey, I gotta, I gotta find that. And so he used it as well as on the liners and on the sevens, the CQC sevens, it's actually that, that checkering file that makes the, the, the jimping on the liners, not the scales. And it's, it's almost identical to that. Okay. All right. So uh, before we get into your background, I just want to show this next knife, the one I just got back from you. Uh, this is the Emerson Elvia, a new model uh, collaboration with uh, Ed Calderon and uh we decided, well, I wanted to go with this kind of burgundy color. And then you you searched for a while and sourced out this beautiful, uh, this looks like a linen or a a fine weave canvas micarta. And yeah. uh, what is that? Is that linen? What is that? No, so that's, that's a, it's a double red canvas. That's what that one is. And, and I can see it looks like you oiled it. It's a little bit more of a rich color. Um, usually it will be, when you're sanding it, it will be like a, a pink uh, just because of the dryness, but you know, with hand oils or just you rub any type of oil on it, it really brings out the rich color. Um, so yeah, it's a double red canvas. Well, Tom, I don't know if you remember, but right before you sent this, you asked if you wanted me, if you wanted, uh, if I wanted you to put some linseed oil on this. And I said, yes, please. And yeah. I haven't touched it except the fact that I've been handling it all. The time. <laughs> <laughs> and so my it's hand oils are yeah. So you did this contouring, which is absolutely beautiful. Uh, if you look at it on, you know, in cross section, it's domed. 
and yeah. it feels amazing, especially in this knife, which has such a sort of dedicated grip. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's uh, that actually starts out about a three sixteenths um, thickness stock, and then just I'll get on the, the belt sander and slowly just keep rounding the edges, rounding the edges, and bring it to about one hundred twenty thousandths on the edges, and it'll be about one hundred forty to one hundred fifty in the middle. Um, le learn that from a couple other guys in some of the groups that uh, their stuff is years above mine in quality and, or just maybe just um, execution. We'll, we'll use that word. Uh, but I just picked their brains and mm -hmm. um, and they just said, no, just just go at it. And you're going to tear some stuff up, which we did. Right. But uh, I appreciate you letting me try that. My first Elvia because oh. it's so hot. It's so hot in the Emerson market right now. And, you know, a lot of guys were doing them. And when you reached out, I thought, man, this is going to be a, this could be a cool piece. So I definitely took my time. Um, no, you know, knowing that it was going to be the first one and I kind of had to learn the layout uh, mm -hmm. as far as making sure the backspace are fit uh, just right, because we're still using the socks standoffs inside. So if you ever want to take it apart and put it back to normal, you can do that. And that's how I do all my stuff. So if someone wants to go stock and sell it and separate the, the custom pieces, they can do that. Well, you said it took you a long time. It takes it. It took you very little time. I know you sent an email, uh, or, or actually through Instagram, you sent a sort of update with shots, yep. and you're saying, "Sorry, it's taking a long." I'm like, "Tom, you're you know, <laughs> you work very quickly compared to you know, knife makers and other people we might be used to dealing with yeah. out there." Um, uh, how did you get involved with knives in the first place? H have you always been a knife lover, or? No. Well, yeah, I've always had a, I've always had a pocket knife. Uh, I'm a mechanic by trade. And I'd say I started getting into um, guns and weaponry about maybe seven years ago. And I picked up an article. It sounds cheesy, but I picked up an article of Recoil Magazine. And it had Ernest in there. And so it started talking about um, the wave and just how, how he uh, started to design his knives. And uh, he also grew up in the upper Midwest, just like myself. I'm from Minnesota. Okay. And just you know, had a, had a, a little bit of a similar background, uh, hard work ethic, growing up on farms, and I, so I just I started digging in, and and um, at that time, you know, we spend hundreds or thousands on knives now. You know, some of us collectors do, but at that time, I was picking up with some of those Kershaw Emersons, you know, and I thought, well, I'll pick one of these up, see how this wave works, and just hooked on it right away. I mean, you know, no pun intended, but just the way <laughs> that thing, yeah, <laughs> but the way that thing just just just. Uh, flicks open, you know, coming out of the pocket. And immediately within a couple of weeks, I had a CQC seven and a ZT uh, 620. And it, from then on, the wife said, what, what's up with all these knives? And so I had to figure out a way to supplement the, the knife um, collecting. And so I, I, buy, I bought some scales from some of the different guys out there and the quality was all right. But I, for me, give you a little bit more of my background. I worked in uh, motorsports for five years. I drank okay. racing in NASCAR, and everything there is just minute, very close uh, attention to detail. And working in an engine shop, you, you really see the perfection and some of the high-end machinery and end mills and lathes and stuff. And so I thought, man, I, I can do better than that. And so I just got on some of the Facebook groups. Uh, a shout out to ECOG and, and operators tonight. And, uh, and those guys were just so helpful. And, uh, you know, a lot of those guys have been around Emerson's for 15, 20 years. And I just started picking their brains. And, uh, um, and they said, yeah, you can go. They said, go for it. See what happens. And, and I just started making some. So it's, I've, I've been doing them, I'd say, regularly now, Bob, for probably 18 months, maybe 15 months. Uh, oh, but I've had, I've had probably maybe five or six regular customers that just keep saying, hey, what can we do? You know, can we do this or that? And I haven't got out to the frame locks um, or the thick liners or anything like that just yet. Uh, but I've got some machinery I'm looking at uh, adding to get into some of that stuff, too. Uh, well, uh, geez, a couple of things. First of all, uh, you're ready to go on the frame locks. I mean, for sure. Uh, all you have to do is get something a little bit thicker in terms of the materials because uh, the tolerances of these two knives, and just by tolerances, I mean how closely you adhere to the liners and and how you know how beautifully this thing is put together and by the way uh both of these knives you way improve their action uh really? this, okay. was, well, this has good. always been a very sticky knife and i'm yeah. a tinkerer i've taken this apart plenty of times and and the um 
excuse me, the Alvia was going through its uh, typical Emerson adolescence with its stickiness, yeah. you know, which eventually yeah. goes away anyway. But uh, yeah. these two knives I've gotten back from you and been not only uh, so excited and impressed about the scales, but the action itself has just been improved from your taking it apart and very, you know, carefully putting it back together and all that. Um, so uh, the... Uh, the whole Emerson line. What is it about Emerson that resonates with you? I know you said uh, there's that Wisconsin, that that middle upper middle west connection. Uh, there's the wave. Uh, yeah. But is there anything about anything else about this construction that resonates with you? Because uh, you seem to be very, um, you've seemed to mastered this. Well. You know, on that, no, it's just the, just the mechanics of it. Um, he, he makes it simple and I might, I might rub some guys wrong here, but you know, you got the fanboys out there in the other groups and I won't say any specific names, um, but they look so far into quality, but they never use them. And for me, again, being a mechanic, I'm using this stuff. And so it's, you know, pull it out of the pocket. It, uh, the 154 holds a great edge for what I'm using. Um, I mean, everything I've got as a user, I don't have any safe Queens. Uh, and if it's not sitting there, it ends up getting sold. But that, for, the, for the Emerson's, it's kind of like the big boys Lego because you can add the backspacer, even on a standoff model, like we did on your Elvia, you know, you can change up colors, textures. I've been starting to source some different pivots that we can put on these things. Um, no, it's, it's just kind of a big boys Lego, you know, kind of like what Hinderer does with their stuff, except on a little bit more, um, less expensive scale, I'd say. Uh, different clips, you know, obviously the steel flame stuff is, is really popular with the Emerson guys. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Ernie and the company, they've got a lot of options, you know, on the site for different colors, different, uh, materials for pivots and, and uh, hardware and such. So, yeah. Well, you, you definitely, uh, trade something in when you go from, uh, a two scale knife to a, um, you know, to a, to a frame lock, right? When you're yes, doing a frame yes. lock, you only have to get one side, right? So I would imagine, I would imagine uh, when you go, you know, on from, from Emerson, I mean, you, you've been doing ZTs and you and I have yes. discussed your doing uh, this knife. I just haven't yes, sir. let it out of my uh, possession That's yet. Fine. But That's big, fine. Big, big fan of this knife and yeah. not a big fan of carbon fiber. And I would love <laughs> to have some, some micarta on this, but something I want to ask you, uh, go sure. a little bit deeper. You said, you know, you're mechanic and you worked yeah. in NASCAR and yeah. I would imagine um, you're dealing with tighter tolerances, or if not, you're definitely dealing with higher stakes. What did you take from the NASCAR realm uh, into the knife making or the the scale making and and knife modding realm uh, that that is valuable? So uh, it back back to the tolerance side of it, uh, just looking at understanding the. Uh, the location of, and I'm actually reading Bob Terzuola's book right now to really learn how I can start doing my own frame locks here in the near future, but understanding geometry, which is real important in valve train and in a race engine, that's, that's everything is a cylinder head in the valve train. Um, just looking at flatness uh, on, on the liners and then, and then tolerances and thicknesses of the standoff in relation to your blade and your washer, making sure everything is totally parallel. If you don't, if you've got kind of a, a bend here and there, that's going to tighten up. Is the detent ball in the pocket properly? Uh, and then how can we change that if it's not? Uh, looking at different size stop pins. Uh, but yeah, just tolerances, Bob. That's the big thing. Um, attention to detail. You know, like you said on, on what you see on the Elvia and the 13, um, just going a step further than I guess I've received in the past. Mm. Uh, but, but, but just trying to not one up the next guy, but just kind of give him a run for his money. So if, if I can get, if I get a little bit better, let's bring his quality up too, you know? So yeah, definitely just, just uh, attention to detail. Just look at the finer points. Well, I have to say one uh, sort of incidental or collateral uh, result of having you put scales on the knife is you, you do take away a little bit of the machine shatter off of the liners. And that is, yeah. uh, that is a bit pleasing to me. Uh, but uh uh, <laughs> this, this one in particular, the, uh, this very, very fine and beautiful, uh, canvas tan micarta has aged, uh, very, very nicely. Um, 
I apologize there. That's uh, fine. Uh, so um, with the with the attention to detail, the attention to tolerances, and we're talking about machining, um, when you go from uh, a brand new knife that is coming to you from Emerson, just kind of out of the box, yep. to, to what someone such as myself imagines it being, uh, I, I send you an idea for uh, a you know, material that I want in the handle and color yep. and such. How does your process work from there? <laughs> it's actually pretty easy. There's about five, four or five different vendors out there that have my Carta G10, um, just a whole bunch of different handle materials. And, and honestly, a lot of them carry the same. So when, you know, when you shoot me out an idea, I just, I just take photos and send them to you. I mean, I'm not a smart guy, Bob. <laughs> so uh, I'll just send out some ideas and I've never had anybody say, man, that's just damn ugly stuff. You know, <laughs> all the time they're like, wow, that looks good. And okay. So my job's a lot easier. You know, but the canvases, um, and again, I'm learning from some of the other guys, the way you sand it, you get a different a different texture, maybe a different shade, or you get multiple shades. Um, one sec. So here we go. Here's one of my pieces in process right now. So this is a mini A100, mm -hmm. and that's green canvas, and you can see the different, just the different shades, the lighter and the dark green. And that's yeah. just how you hold it, you know, when you're sanding it. So you, you can kind of pull some different colors out of it. And then what type of oil are you adding? You know, like you had said, linseed. And, and so that sometimes a lighter oil won't darken as much. And you get a heavier oil on there that really might make, bring some rich colors out of it. So it's, it's not a, it's not any uh, secret sauce. It's, it's just finding what's available. So. So, well, okay. So I've done a, a little bit of hobbyist knife making around here uh, in the backyard and in the basement uh, over the last few years. And I've noticed that some micarta, it seems to have sides. Like uh, I thought it was kind of, doesn't matter which way you attack it. It's kind of, yep. kind of sand out uh, the same way, but that doesn't yep. seem to be correct. Is it? Uh <laughs> yeah. oh, okay. All right, all right. Thank you. Thank so, you for not okay. saying you don't know how to no, say no, no. <laughs> So so here here's what I'll say. And again, I'm I'm still new to this. And, and I, um what I've been figuring out though is it, especially on the Emersons that use eighth inch scale stock from the factory, on my carta, don't start out with eighth inch scale stock because you really get a thin fast because you have to get past the epoxy or the or the resin. So what I've done, um another one, hold on a second. Yeah, yeah, please. So, uh, so this is a black, that's a black canvas, my card that's going on a CQC eight. Um, and actually you, you can see it, see how it's kind of rounded there, Bob at the front. Yeah. Yes. And so it's contoured. So right now at the thickest point, this is probably uh 150 to 160. This started out at 220. Wow. And, and the, the people that were selling it had it listed as 190. And so you're, we're getting some thicker stock depending upon who we're buying from, but that that's got a nice grain to it on this one. And it didn't take much on the sander, but yes, there are different vendors that they're either higher on the resin or the epoxy, however they hold it together and you'll sand and sand. It'll just be hard. There won't be any texture on it. And a lot of guys don't like them smooth. They don't want them, you know, the Emerson grippy, like it's sanding your, your pockets open, right. but they also don't want to smooth. Uh, kind of like what we did on the Elvia. So finding this black canvas, you really get a nice texture. And you, you get some grip on it, even when it's dry. Yeah, and you don't want it to, uh, I would imagine that uh, it's unforgiving. You get past a certain point real quickly and boom. Oh, that's yeah. It. oh yeah. Start from scratch. Yeah. For and all now, uh, yes. and uh, also, um, if, if you're running your belts too fast or with too high an abrasive, I would imagine. Well, I, I say I imagine I'm being coy. I've burnt plenty of my <laughs> carta because all I have is a one speed and it's like, <laughs> and if I'm yeah, pressing yeah. too hard and I'm being too anxious, it'll yeah. burn and you'll yeah. smell it and it will get black. Yep. And yep. so, so what's the deal with uh, how, what, what other material, what natural material is, would you say my carta is most like? Oh, you know, honestly, I've only worked with uh, just G10s and my card. So I can't really answer you there. You know, like I said, I've only been new. I'm pretty new to this whole whole realm of, of uh, handle making. Uh, but honestly, here you can. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, it's it's nothing special. Bob. There's it's, the shop. <laughs> I love yeah, it. It's a it's, it's a palm grin sander. 
that uh, it's got a two inch by uh, 46 belt and it's single speed. But uh, talking with one of my buddies, Steve, we just talk about different grits. And, you know, sometimes I'll run on a 60 or an 80 and then I'll just kind of work up to it. I'll go easy. And then I'll throw on a worn out blade or I'm sorry, worn out um, belt and it'll kind of bring the texture I want on the outside. So it's okay. there might be some black magic, but I haven't figured it out. <laughs> Well, so what, what what was it initially that that got you to? So you're a knife guy, and oh, yeah. and 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 you're working like Emerson, like Ernest Emerson. You know, he worked for Hughes Aircraft. He was a machinist, and and you're working as a, a, a shop a, a garage. I'm not sure exactly a mechanic. You said yeah. in NASCAR, yeah. kind of a similar thing. So what actually, you know. Um, got you started doing this, made you think that this was the thing that you should be spending your time doing uh, free time? Well, for me, it's, uh, you know, like I said, I got into the hobby probably 14 or 15, got my first real Emerson probably uh, late 16 and just oh. took it apart and just started playing with it and just looking at it thinking, you know, yeah, the, the black G10 is cool. You know, but let's let's kind of make it our own, you know, like, you know, going back to what Rick Hinner does with a lot of his stuff. Okay. And, you know, just again, on a more inexpensive scale. And like I said, I, I got a, a set or two from him. some other guys. I thought nah, that's for the price. That's not really that um, impressive. And so I just saw it out and I just went in and cut some pieces of G10 and, and went to work with my just my air grinder at work. And someone's like, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm making a handle for my knife. It, it, it worked, turned out all right. But then I got into drill press uh, and some different grinders and sanders and things. Um, and then using some end mills to really, uh, everything's located off the pivot. And so when I'm doing that, you're drilling a pivot hole and then your pocket. And, and you know, you talked about how that that knife holds, you know, when you when you when it's assembled, everything holds in place. And I actually had a customer this week say, and I just did a set of natural canvas on a seven. He goes, you fixed the Y-axis play. And I, I just told him, I said, I just plunge the pocket like I do. You know, I, I try to hit the same depth as long as the the standard Emerson pivot will stay in the pocket mm. flush or a little bit in. I'm not really doing anything different. I'm just I do the hole for the po uh, for the pivot a little bit undersized and then just slowly file it out just so it slides in there snug. And there are times that it's been off and then I figure out what I got to do on my uh, drill press table to, to get that just right. Well, that's it right there. You were talking before about attention to detail, and yeah. that's exactly why you saved the action on my 13 and my Elvia is because, uh, um, understandably, at the Emerson plant or the Emerson uh, manufacturing facility, they don't have time to do it the way you do it, to make a small hole and then ever so yeah. slightly bore it out yeah. and, and get it perfect. So, um Really, I mean, so uh, these were two that were on the docket for carbonization, but now it's not necessary. So, um, yeah, definitely keep me keep me posted on that. You know, when you're I using, stuff. I, I like talking to my some of my customers, just seeing how you know it, how the micarta wears, how it colors, <laughs> and uh, just make sure everything is is uh, up to par down the road. So you said uh, you're interested in the mechanisms of uh, frame lock. What's, yes, what's sir. up with that? Are you going to start making uh, your own knives or? Well, maybe down the road, but what I'll be doing, um, that some of the other mentors that I, that I get with, uh, you know, the, the big thing on the Emerson side, it's not just scales, but then frame lock conversions. And I don't have one out, but I've got one from, uh, Andrew Charlotte. You know, he does some, some work on Instagram, awesome work. Yeah. And he did a fr uh, frame lock, uh, conversion for my buddy, Doug. And, um, you know, Doug used to show it to me and finally I just ended up buying it off Doug because it was, it was bearings and it was, um, I think it was 150 thousandths titanium on the frame lock side. And that's one thing Emerson's never done is a frame lock roadhouse. And a lot of us have asked, you know, when you do your next XHD model, I mean, frame lock roadhouse, but they just discontinued it. So we doubt that'll happen, but just being able to, you know, so, uh, you know, what I've got in pocket tonight is um, I've got the Vindicator, and mm. so that, that's going to be my first uh, my first po boy. You know, I, I guess yeah, yeah. What call it. So I'll do I'll do the um, I'll do the work on that. Just start learning on titanium. You know, what speeds, what feed. You know, do I have to you know work the pivot in, make sure the stuff doesn't fly off and cut me in the head. Uh, so, but then so getting into. Oh, I'm sorry. What I was going to say. Explain to people what a po boy is. 
Okay, so I don't I don't have one here, um, but what it is, you know, like you talked about the, the bolster area on your uh, 13 or the, the, the faux bolster, bolster, but you actually put titanium bolster there and then the rest, the rest will be uh, a micarta, you know, and, or um, some type of, uh, you know, some will use G10, but most of the time it's going to be a micarta. So um, it's, it's, it's to evoke the look of an or of a, of a custom Emerson custom, yeah. knife without yeah. it being yeah. a custom Emerson with the uh, yeah. titanium bolster, the uh, titanium yeah. liners, and then the. Uh, so uh, that's exciting. I uh, because uh, um, uh, my this was my EDC today, and it was just my sax, All which right. I, I had custom sharpened and is amazingly yeah. sharp, uh, but. I want to do something with it. I, I know I uh, spoke with you a little bit yep. about uh, yep. ivory, something or other would yep. be nice, but a po' boy would also be. So lovely. Bob, it's, <laughs> it's funny you say that. Uh, this was, this was today's EDC actually. Uh, Ooh. Sax, the yes. Sax BT. And so this one was a customer's uh, and this is uh, dark brown micarta canvas. And um, he had sent it and had the, that like kind of the uh, the brass type hardware in it. And I love this one. And his name's Roger and, and me and him go back and forth on knives. And I ended up getting a mini sax in. And he goes, ooh, he goes, uh, he goes, um, is that one gonna be up for sale? <laughs> and I said, well, <laughs> is that sax VT available? And so we, we ended up, you know, do a little horse training, but these things, I mean, single detent, they're just so smooth. They I mean, really are. You hear the guys saying, "Oh, the the, the build quality is not there," but I got to call hogwash. I mean, these single detents. I mean, that's almost bearing smooth, Bob. I mean, yeah. Oh, lock, oh no, no, no. Lockups are great. Yeah, yeah. I I agree a hundred percent. I have about fifty fifty. I have uh, nine Emersons right now. Used to have ten. Uh, have nine now, and half of them. So four and a half. Uh, four of them are single detent. Yeah. <laughs> this is one of them, and. Yep. Uh, uh, same thing. I mean, they are super, super yeah. smooth. And I don't care what yeah. anyone says. Uh, I'll take the uh, phosphor bronze washers uh, over bearings only um, in that in this kind of knife. That's what you want. Right. Uh, I yeah. do have the Iron Dragon, which I love. I okay. love the action and, you know, the frame lockiness of all of it. But really, I come to Emerson for this. Uh, I come to it for the liner lock. Yep. I come uh, I come to it for the for the design naturally yeah. Uh, yeah. the 154 cm which i'm a huge fan of i don't care what anyone says about yes. m3 yes. whatever i love 154 <laughs> and yeah. i love yeah. phosphor bronze washers yeah they're uh i mean it's 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 a tough combination to beat you know bob started using it back in was it early 90s late 80s bob terzuola yeah. and then you know a lot of other guys you know using that walker liner lock I mean, that's, it, it's tough, you know, it's, it's not as pretty as a frame lock some days, but a lot of guys aren't carrying knives for the, you know, for the pocket candy that, yeah. that we, you know, we use that term. They're using it for work. Yeah. So, right. Yeah. So what do you carry? What's in your collection? So, well, you, you know, you just seen today's, today's carry. I'm sorry. There we go. Um, and then uh, the, the, the vindicators here. Uh, and that's, that's the one that's just sitting in the, uh, in the toolbox out here. But um here is so here's some other pieces of my work so i love the tiger and so this is a, a fir first run uh non-signature tiger um and so that one's in dark brown peeled mm. black horse and this this is a workhorse right here um and, and the only thing it's missing is i just don't have the liners um cerakoted yet and so that's one of my favorite i've got one of those in the sf blade with the black horse and those oh uh I have, I have to get a tiger. tiger. Wait, so what's that? That's, that's a custom backspacer. Uh, and I don't do those yet, but my buddy Christian, his his work is phenomenal. I uh, just got to throw his name out there. And his stuff, he does a lot of custom uh, backspacers. Uh, this is my first hinderer. Uh, that's got some peel ply orange on it. Uh, that, that's by me. Uh, I, I, I don't sell hinderer parts. I just got to throw that out there. Uh, okay. But yeah, that's, that was one I was just kind of tinkering with. Um, let this me let me ask idea. you as you move on to the next one. Would you experiment yeah. with someone who you're familiar with? Some someone such as myself. Uh, I would send you a. Interested. Well, oh, oh, you, you broke up. What's that? I said I would send you a test bed knife if you were interested, yeah. and a hinderer yeah. you could check out. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I've done a couple for friends, um, you know, that, that were maybe just in a trade, but, but, uh, as far as it, it's pretty well known that, you know, Rick does his own stuff in house. And so oh, a lot of the guys that, the yeah. guys that uh, you know, pimp or, or do custom, we're not stepping on his toes. So gotcha, um, gotcha, gotcha. the next one, we, we can touch back on that later, but the next one, this is my buddy, Doug's, uh, 640 ZT 640. And this was my first, um, non frame lock. Uh, ZT that I did had to do a custom pivot because they've got those little the little hex for the pivot milled yeah. out and everything by hand. I'm not doing that. So this is uh, all of canvas. Is, I don't know, hopefully that shows up pretty can good. You, can you uh, show, uh, push that closer to your camera, please? There we go. Oh, there we go. Oh so, man. Yeah, and so it's it's not beveled too much, but uh, my buddy Doug's got some larger, some larger hands. So I made it a little bit wider for him. And then we did some, uh, satin Torx hardware on that one. So definitely a great, a, a great knife, you know, just like the Viper. Um, yes. so that, that's his. And, and I wanted to show that one off, but for me, the collection is probably 90% Emerson. Uh, my second go-to is Les George. Uh, oh. his, stuff, uh, his stuff is, uh, especially as collaborations with Wilson combat, I've got three or four of those and that stuff is just beautiful. Uh, and less, less is one of those guys and me and him, I'll shoot out messages to him once in a while. Just, just ask him questions on his knives. And he, this guy will talk knives for hours. I mean, exactly. you probably don't like yourself. Yeah. Less is a great guy. And if he's listening, man, you're, you're, you're one hell of a dude. So, but just the, like the, uh, I'll show you my, here's one, um, this is this is a work beater, and this thing gets sharpened probably once a month. That's uh -huh. the 09, and that's left hand carry, and that's it ain't pretty, but man, that thing just never gives up. And that's another line of lock, and and so between him and, and I got to meet Rick Hinderer last year at the uh, USA Made Blade uh, open house, mm -hmm. and you know Rick and Scott they're really close, and and Scott's one of the biggest Hinderer dealers in America, and he's thirty minutes up the road for me in Salisbury. Oh, nice. So, in there and yeah i'll go in there and you know, just dangerous <laughs> it is, it is. Um, but getting to meet rick and you know another guy i mean I talked in 20 minutes and, and just brought up the scale making stuff and i said hey where can i get some of that he goes well he said that's proprietary to us he said but he goes if you ever need help designing a scale style he said holler at me and i mean somebody like that in the industry just opens up the you know hey give me a call i mean that's huge so I haven't met anybody in the industry that, that hasn't said, hey, what do you need? Here, here's what I can help you with. And uh, yeah, just awesome, awesome people to be around. I got to do one more shout out. And this, this is the one main guy that's really helped me. Uh, that's Bill Yester, uh, Yester 5. He's a uh, usual oh, suspect. Oh, yes, yes, yes. A lot of guys know Bill. Bill is, he's a phenomenal dude. Um, he has helped me um, obtain some, I guess what some guys would call grails. I don't use that term, but... Uh, I've got um, I got one knife that it won't go anywhere, and it, it's from my good friend Bill. So, but he I can text him any any time and say, "Hey, I've got this issue. What do I do?" And he'll walk me through it. And and so, like I said, just great guys to just to reach out and, and just really just pick their brain, and, and they're never short on time. So that's that's what I love about the industry. That's uh, I mean, just in doing this show, this podcast, I've learned that uh I, I had that suspicion going into it but i've met so many great people um yeah. but let me ask you this tom uh, as we wrap what yeah. uh in your future what knives um in the more near future before you start making your own uh frame lock folders and and kind of go off that way what knives do you want to start making handles for next where do you want to take um your operation next yeah. So uh, good, good question, Bob. And I'm actually looking at maybe getting a mini CNC, a little tabletop one that can actually cut out a lot of them or, or maybe do custom textures. Um, definitely get more into the ZT crowd. I've done, I've done some 630, some 640 stuff, some, some six, yeah, 620, 630 stuff. And then of course you've seen the 640, uh, mm -hmm. get, you know, get into that. Um, do some, um, gosh, I don't know. I'm trying to think of what else I got, you know, so one guy is sending me, um, I don't think it's a CRKT. I'm not really sure the, there's so many different names out there, you know, it's, it's, hard yes, to keep yes, yes. you know, but like you mentioned, he's sending me something. He said, Hey, just take your time on it. Uh, one guy asked about ProTech, but I said, you know, it'd be everything being handmade you know, with the mechanism in there. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. What about yeah, yeah? Can you figure out this switchblade for me, please? Uh, yeah, so dang no, boy. Honestly, Bob, you know, just the the run of the mill stuff. Just keep digging on the Emersons because there's so many guys that are finally understanding that it's it isn't an overrated brand or overpriced. I mean. You look at what it is. Yeah, it's not a frame lock. It's not S35 or, or, or M390, but the stuff, it never quits, you know, and their their warranty department is t- uh, top notch. That Vindicator that I just showed you, that came back and it, it was it was touching the opposite liner and it came back. That thing is as good as new yeah. in less than a month. And it's, it's just, yeah, it, it's hard to not want to be, you know, or surrounded by the Emerson group and the guys and women connected to it. Yeah, and Ernest Emerson himself is an awesome, awesome guy, and uh, you know, inspirational and a huge dude in this whole industry. Yeah. Uh, I, I think, uh, I think Emerson obviously is the right choice. Obviously, I think that, but also ZT uh, for yeah. its uh, obvious connections to uh, Emerson. Uh, also, you might consider there's so many people out there with uh, 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 Benchmades. Once you once you get the CNC. Yeah. And, yep. and I, I am not a huge Benchmade fan, uh, though I have a number, a couple of their knives that you know I do like very much. Yep. But you know, everyone's got limited bandwidth yeah. for what they're crazy yeah. about. Yeah, the, the Benchmades, and, and I've got a, um, I've got a couple I've looked at, and I want to get into them, but they have different pockets inside, you know, with that access lock. And so for right now, until I get some type of end mill or you know a CNC that I can you know, route out those pockets and everything can still fit. Uh, I'm going to pause on that. Cause I've had guys ask me, I said, you know, right now until I can put my stamp on it, it's not going to leave the shop. All so. right. All right. I, I'm taking that back, Tom, I'm taking that back. And as your future agent for uh, sales in skills, <laughs> uh, cold steel, cold steel because they're all kind of very uniform two sides. Emerson, you're, you're kind of used to the two side thing. But yeah. they just made the big sale and people are scrambling or will be scrambling to get cold steels yeah. before they, they just got sold to a giant outdoors uh, company that has a whole million different brands. And everyone's, yeah. Yeah. everyone's, you know, assuming that they're going to go down in quality and, and also in the range of crazy weapons you can buy from them, um, yeah. which saddens me greatly. But there are a lot of great models. Maybe you could look there. I don't know. You didn't ask for advice, and there you got a whole bunch of it. <laughs> I've had guys, you know, kind of poke that, and I haven't told them no. I said, hey, you know, send it in after the holidays, and if you don't mind a little bit of a lead time, two, three months, where I could get into it and learn it, because mm-hmm. the, the Emerson is just so uh, – it's so uniform. You've pretty much got four sizes, and it's easy, you know, other than – you know, when some of the minis, they're going smaller on some of the stop pins and things. But 98% of the Emersons are all four, four hole sizes and you're done. So so what what is your absolute favorite Emerson? If you could only have one for the rest of your life, what would it be? So it, it's a toss up, but it's used the same handle. But it'd be either the Roadhouse or the, the Combat Fighter. Uh, uh, I'm a Tanto guy. And that Roadhouse has got a little bit of a belly and it's it's over three and a half inches long. And it's a great, it's a great handle, but the, the combat fighter has got the, the, the CQC eight type blade. So it's got a good belly on it and, and it's usable, uh, between those two, I've got five variations of them. And if, if they came to us and said, you know, you get one edge, you know, it, it's probably going to be the roadhouse because it's, that was my second main Emerson. And, um, it's, it's such a beautiful knife. It's sad that they discontinued it, but I who knows? I come back with that, but um, I, I do want to try an Iron Dragon. Um, mm. Those those look nice, um, and I'd also like I've, I've had one, but I you know uh, sold it off. But the six the six hour Legion uh, Emerson collaboration uh, on bearings, it's got the same handle as as the Vindicator, uh, but it's got the flipper with a, a slightly different blade. Um, but yeah, just look up Emerson Legion Legion. Knife. Okay. Yeah. I'll have to, yeah. I'll, have to, oh. I'll uh, definitely have to check that one out. The the Legion. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's, it's a sexy knife. It's they only made them for Sig Sauer, uh, I think for about a year. And you could only get them through through Sig in the in the Legion package if you were a member. 
Uh, and then, of course, they started hitting the, the secondary market as soon as they were discontinued and the prices went went stupid eye. So, yeah. So you love the roadhouse handle. I always thought the roadhouse handle would look great with a sax blade. I got to say, I'm a sucker for the sax blade. What did you think of the 17? Uh, you know, the 17 that came out looks like a straight razor kind of. Or razor, yeah. So uh, you know, they only did 130 of them. I didn't, I didn't jump <laughs> on it um, only because there's. Um, I, I just picked up one of the the operators eight. I don't know if you know what that is, but yep. that was only available through the group. I was lucky enough to get one of those uh, because no, I've been no waves, of, right? Uh, no, no wave. Yeah, it's and it's it's a right hand grind eight, oh, and yeah. so the bevel is on the yeah. It, it's a beautiful knife. Um, and I've actually done a set of handles for one of my buddies because the rich light is so smooth. And so he, he asked me to do a uh, double black with a matching, uh, backspacer. So, you know, I just picked that one up and I had to pass on the 17, but there's something else coming down the pipeline. That's, um, you know, I'm, I'm saving up money for, so yeah. And I, I, I got a super 15 coming in, in the mail here in the next couple of weeks. Ooh, I'm excited about that. Nice, yeah. Nice. That's gonna be a beast. <laughs> I, I, I have a super 15 so, that, uh, someone gave me that I'm, I'm very grateful for, but oh, that knife is awesome. And I had a regular 15 and yeah. I liked it. Uh, there was a, a particular issue with that knife. I sold it off for that reason. And the person who bought it was aware of that issue. Uh, and, and I sort of wrote off the 15 for a while. And then someone sent yeah. me the super 15 and man, yeah. what a knife. Um, so is, and I got to ask you since you got it, is that super, is that a single detent? Yes. Uh, the one I have. Yeah, yeah, so it's a post, what is it, 2016, I think they started putting the single detent. Yeah. And, and, and actually, Tom, I can't I can't decide what I like better. This is an this is an older, this is a piece yeah. arc. Yeah. And it's got that smooth, slow roll out. Yeah. And I love yeah. that. I love that. But this, you know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> they are nice. They're nice. So yeah, the Peace Arc, that's one wicked worn cliff. I mean, I did one of those a few months back. Yeah. And it's it's very few blades really get me nervous. When I was assembling your Elvia, I was very careful. And when I did one of those Peace Arcs, I mean that thing will wipe you open in a heartbeat. Yeah, so. this uh this particular knife, uh, it was half closed and it dropped. I don't know how I let go of it. It dropped and it landed in my leg. It went about this oh, deep oh, into my thigh. Oh, no, no, probably oh, about that deep. Not into my thigh, into my calf. And then it went like this. Okay. Oh. oh. <laughs> so uh Not good. yeah, yeah, that was a that was a bad moment. But for this, I'm thinking purple, more towards the blue side, purple micarta. I, I brought a couple out to show you. <laughs> yes, yeah. I'm thinking uh very similar to the Elvia. Okay. Uh, and you could totally uh, knock. Yep, I mean, yep. and then and then the uh, I I need to get this. I think in a burlap. It's called the Appalachian, so it yep. should be in like sort of a rustic pattern, like a burlap. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Uh, I mean, so I have a couple you're... of projects for you. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds good, Bob. I'm always I'm always open. Books are open right now, but it's funny because when they get flooded, man, it's a bunch of work. But I don't I don't like sitting on my laurels and just. Well, we'll wait and see what comes up next. I try to get everything done, and I tell all my customers four to five weeks max. And honestly, sometimes you know, like on the, the thirteen, it took me a little bit because of all the, the checkering work. But mm -hmm. usually, yeah. it's it's about three weeks on average turnaround time. All right. So the best way to get in touch with Tom, I believe, is the way I got in touch with him, which is through Instagram. I DM'd him. He's got uh, a very, oh, you can see the Elvia on the lower right. That's mine. That's my backspacer, my handle left and right, uh, as it is on the blade you saw tonight. Uh, so reach out to Tom through Instagram. He's blades underscore N underscore such Tom Engelson. Awesome dude. Definitely check him out there. Uh, that might be my, oh no, that's, I don't have a tiger. I wish it were mine, but it's not. So in any case, for Tom Engelson, Blades and Such. Uh, reach out for him for amazing uh, aftermarket Emerson scales in Micarta, G10, and other materials. Also, he works on ZTs and a few other brands and uh, is ever expanding, uh, expanding his, uh, his reach. So check him out. That was Tom Engelson at Blades and Such. And I am Bob, the Knife Junkie DeMarco, saying have a fine evening. <laughs>